Hello again. Remkus is a heavyweight in the WordPress scene. <laughs> he runs an agency in the Netherlands. <laughs> he was co-organizer of different WordCamps and meetups. And he's a weightlifter, uh, physical and figuratively. And as a WordPress veteran, he knows how to tame WordPress and WooCommerce, and we are look. Uh, and he also has a newsletter, which is not your uh, default news, but very opinionated, interesting, and worth to subscribe to newsletter. So let's dive in and do WooCommerce, but faster. Thank you. Thank you. Is, uh... I may need to do the mic a little louder. Is this better? Can, I, can everybody hear me well? Yeah. Um, thank you. Um, you had me there at, at, at uh, what was it, heavyweight? Yeah, yeah, I guess I am. Um, the, um, the talk of today is uh, WooCommerce but faster. Now. Um, before I start explaining what I mean with that, besides the obvious thing, uh, I kind of would like to get a feel of who's in the room. So can I get a show of hands for people who uh, own a WooCommerce store? Okay, there's a few of you. Who works with WooCommerce a lot? That's a lot more of you. Who develops inside of WooCommerce and builds custom plugins and all that. Okay. Out of curiosity, if, no, if you do nothing with WooCommerce... Um, okay, there's a few. There's a few. Okay. All right. Um, so, um, my presentation is really very, very simple. Um, here's how you make WooCommerce fast. You install a WordPress caching plugin, you turn it on, and you're done. That's it. That was it. Thank you. I'm sorry. I, I thought I'd try my version of April's Fools. It's not my thing. I, I, I make terrible jokes. So, um, But the, um, the funny thing is, for a lot of people, this is the truth. A lot of people think by making WordPress slash WooCommerce fast, all you have to do is turn on your caching plugin, provided you're on decent hosting, and you're done. That's it. You can just sit back, relax, and start seeing the money pour in. Uh, unfortunately, that is based on some misconceptions. And uh, this, is some, this is something that most people don't really truly understand, and this is what I'm going to explain today. Like, what does make a site faster? And when can we actually call it faster? Because um, caching is not making fast. That's the first thing that we need to make really clear. Um, and if you're already at the tip of your seat going like, oh, I have questions now, I'm, I'm so not, I, I, I don't believe this. this, I have my own opinion and I have my own experience, that's wonderful. We have question and answer at the end of this. So uh, write them down as, you, as we go along. So caching doesn't make a site fast. Here's another one. A large database won't make a site slow. Who here has read over the years the many WordPress tutorials where it said, if you have a large database, if you have post revisions, you need to turn that off or limit it to three or something like that. Who has seen those tutorials? Yeah, that's a, that's a large percentage of you. So here's me saying that is false. Now. Are there reasons why you would want to have a, uh, a slimmed down database? Sure, but performance isn't one of them. I'll explain why later. Here's another great example of what I see happen a lot in terms of, here's what you need to do, and be sure to do this because if you have a memory limit, make sure it's as high as possible because that'll make your site faster. Well, spoiler alert, it does not. Will it help in certain cases if code is not written correctly? Sure. 
but you can kind of see where this is going. So memory limit does not affect speed. And turning cache fragment off is probably the thing I see most happen, especially when it comes to WooCommerce. Let's make WooCommerce faster. You know what we do? We turn off cache fragment. Does any, does, who here understands what cache fragments are? Not a lot. Okay, so um, inside of WooCommerce, there's a few functions, especially around the cart experience, that are written in a way that uh, full page reload doesn't need to happen, but maybe just a small section. And that actually makes WooCommerce work um, smarter, I would say. If you're on really bad hosting, though, you will see that that actually makes your site slower. Does that mean that cache fragment is bad? No, it means you're on, you're on really bad hosting. And that's something you need to fix. I hear myself a little bit. Is that me or does it is? Oh, it's been the whole day. I'll try this. So, how many of you have heard or seen these things and work accordingly currently? Don't be, don't, don't be hesitant. All the time, yeah. So, this is quite common. Um, this is mostly around not understanding the base principles. And this is not me coming off of my high horse saying, you don't understand what's going on. This is me saying, we've been fed the wrong type of information for a very, very long period of time in, in the tutorials that we find, in the presentations we've seen, and um, there is really no limit in terms of what is possible, but you most likely need to start thinking in a little bit different way than you currently than know what you've currently been doing. So there are some base principles you need to invest some time in to truly understand what it means to make WooCommerce faster. So you need to understand the layers. Um, there's a way of working. I don't know why they all went like this. Number two, three, and four, they're supposed to go gently. Um, but I guess I'm not a gently person. Just I'm just fast, there you go. Um, the way of working, so the things that you do, how you do it, how you start a project, what tools you're using, how you're measuring the success of your uh, end result. Um, the understanding that there's a place and time for everything you do with your WooCommerce site. And that boils down into having a foundation. So. It's a little bit more than a template, but you kind of get the idea that if you have a foundation of something that's been tested and proven for you and your clients, then you can build off of that and move to a better version off of that in a continuous fashion. So that is essentially, um, these are the four base principles. It all starts here. So let's start with the first one. Understand the layers. This is a really bad echo. Well, possible. I'll try. Yeah, I'm not going to hold that. <laughs> um, so your server stack, um, your PHP and your database are the largest components to making your site fast. There is no other way around it. Does that mean you can discard HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and all your other assets? Absolutely not. But the emphasis should be on the first portion, right? So does this mean you then have to, I have a WooCommerce store, I love using WooCommerce, but does that then mean you have to invest a lot of time into understanding server configurations? No, it shouldn't. PHP, no, same thing. And database, yeah, if you're lucky, you never have to touch it, that's fine. But it does mean you understand that these layers determine what is actually happening in terms of performance for your WooCommerce site. So HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and assets, if you've ever done any type of optimization in the browser, you know what that is, right? That's either Google Lighthouse or PageSpeed or any of those metrics. Not all of them are good. Not all of them are really telling you what you're supposed to be using or what the data says, because it depends on where you are, what you do, what you're testing, everything matters. But that's relatively straightforward in optimizing. What you, 
are what I would say most of us are not build. Who's building servers for fun to try and optimize and, and do that? And who's actually using them in production? Just Joe and Florence. So that's a relatively small crowd is what I'm trying to say, right? Uh, I've built VPSs and I've had a lot of fun doing it. I do not care to do that anymore. There's people much, much smarter than me and way more dedicated and hardcore into optimizing a server. It's a different, it's a different trade and I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for having some experience in it, but it's not something I want to fill my day with. So, where, where do I focus? I focus on HTML and all the rest. So what does that mean for the first portion? That means I look at hosting companies from a different perspective. I don't necessarily look at them and go, what does your manage this look like? What is your response time here? What is it? It's also important, but my main thing that I look for is a proven test where you can actually look into how it's performing under stress, under load, under a lot of whatever it is you're measuring. And for that, there are ways that you can do this yourself, but it's much easier to look at a service that does this for you, and that's called Review Signal. Review Signal, if you've not heard of it before, it is a yearly comparison of all, ex not all existing WordPress hosting, but it's hosting that has said, you know, I'm happy for you to test me and honestly test me all the ways you can possibly think of. And if you then look at who surfaces on top, that is the prime tier you should be looking at in terms of any time you have a site that needs performant hosting. Right? So that means that a lot of your budget or cheapish type hosting, and that's roughly in the range from 5 euros to 30 euros, I generally avoid for the simple reason is not that I like to pay more, but I know what I'm getting if I pay more. So that is one way to start, and that's different than I like working with this host because X reason, Y reason, whatever. We all have our reasons. There are certain hosts I love. There are certain hosts like I'm okay with working with it. And sometimes the performance is better on the ones I, I'm okay working with. It's a small sacrifice if it means I don't have to worry about the next burst of traffic. So the second principle is your way of working. So understanding your stack. So that means you have spent some time investigating what your stack look like. And it's not just your PHP layer, it's not just your database layer, it's not just your server, but it's whatever you're using inside of WordPress as well. Everything has an impact. So a common misconception is that if you keep on adding plugins to WordPress, it'll become slow. Also, not technically true. It depends what that particular plugin does. And uh, if you're approaching about 100, there's a fair chance your site is becoming slower. But it's not a given. I manage sites that have over 100 plugins, and it's fast, like proper fast, even under stress, even on the load. It just depends on what you're doing in those plugins. So understanding your stack, um, lightweight, Anybody get this reference, by the way? Am I alone in this? Oh, okay, nice, <laughs> nice, nice. I'm a big fan of Ronnie Coleman. Um, this, this means that whatever you're introducing in your stack needs to be lightweight first. This is a big one, because we like the fancy plugins that solve a lot of stuff for us. But they re I need to stay away from those? Okay. Uh, oh, is that him? Okay, so the... the, the, um, the um, Lost my entire train of thought. So lightweight means you look at plugins mostly because that's what you're introducing to your stack, um, and you're testing what it does before and what it does after. And this is not a difficult thing. You can do this on your own. So what I'm not doing today is getting in high specificity on what you need to do exactly because that's too much. Um, what I'm getting at is there's a train of thought that you need to follow whenever you're doing something that has a performance requirement that's hard. You can't uh, not think about it. So lightweight means your functions, your plugins will do mostly one or two things. That's it. When you're introducing something larger, you need to be sure that whoever introduces that larger thing has a performance mind, has been thinking of how the code has been written. Is it actually done in a way that 
okay, if I keep doing this over a million page requests, is that performance going to be the same or is it going to add up? Right, so that's simple things as validation checks if the plugin needs to be loaded at all. So check out early, exit early, things like that. Impact testing, this is literally testing what happens before I turn the plugin on, what happens after. And there's even a difference between when I turn it on, when I configure it, and when I think I'm done, right? That means you need to do a little bit more than find the plugin, install it, activate it. That's the first step. You then start measuring before, once you're done activating, once you're done configuring. So impact testing needs to happen. That is a way of working you need to make yourself familiar with. Uh, automating is as simple as that. Whatever you can automate, automate, because if, if there's stuff that you don't have to think about anymore, it'll be done and you'll see the results anyway. So what is the thing you can automate? If you install a plugin on your, either on your local site or on your production site, there are ways you can automatically get services, look at it, and give you feedback on what the impact is. It's a very simple, very lightweight version, but it tells you something. So, the third principle, there is a place and a time. Um, I guess that's probably life as well. Uh, but uh, in terms of WooCommerce, in terms of what you're doing inside of WordPress, there is a lot of stuff that's happening that is not supposed to be in WordPress. My first thing to mention here is security. So security plugins, and I know there's a whole bunch of them, um, security plugins do not belong inside WordPress. That is a black and white line for me. And I'll explain later exactly why. Caching is the same thing. A plugin inside of WordPress should not be caching as caching for WordPress, like um, HTML caching. Um, they simply don't belong there. And I'll explain you in a very simple example why that is. Every single page load on your WooCommerce site, so uh, when somebody has not put something in their cart yet, you are, you are able to fully cache the entire experience. What most folks don't realize is that once they add something to cart, you invalidate cache, right? You can't work with a cached WooCommerce site because you end up, if we were to do that, you would end up with somebody else's cart, right? There's more people on the site at the same time as you are. Or maybe not, but it's been an hour and you're within that hour and voila. And if you've ever had a badly configured WooCommerce cached site, you've seen this. I've had it once, didn't make me happy. Um, so caching doesn't belong there. Why? Because every single thing that is happening inside of WooCommerce needs to go through the normal loading sequence. So what does, that, what does that mean? A page request by any one of you visiting a site that is powered by WordPress slash WooCommerce means it's loading the entirety of WordPress, the entirety of all the plugins, the entirety of the theme and all the functions that go with it. Then it needs to process the functions inside the plugins. And I'm not, this is not the exact sequence, but just to give you an idea of how that works. Uh, then the function needs to execute, and then it needs to produce whatever it's doing. So if you're a caching plugin, you, you need to do all of that. So WordPress is still working, your server is still working, everything is loading, everything is happening. And then it needs to decide if it can, it can serve this page in HTML. But WordPress is already being loaded. So I'll, this is to the extreme that you can have a fully cached WordPress site being brought down because it's serving P, uh, uh, PHP powered HTML caching. Does that make sense? Milan says yes. Dobro. So the same thing happens for security. Like you need to load the whole stack before the security plugin can actually determine whether this is a legit visitor, whether it should take any actions. If it needs to take action, it'll need to do some more. So you can imagine that as you keep adding different stuff on that site, more traffic, 
Uh, maybe you send out a newsletter burst to 15,000 people and, oh, crap, my site goes down. I don't know why. I'm cached. I'm doing okay here, aren't I? No, but you're doing so much you shouldn't be doing in there that invalidates cash and all that. And here we are. So I think this is a hot take. I think most people will reluctantly kind of disagree with me until they actually start measuring. And when you are actually measuring, you will slowly but surely find yourself on my side of the table. It's just data that will tell you this. So, your foundation is essentially the culmination of everything that you found to be working, to be working efficiently, to working fast, and it is your template of stuff that you work with or don't work with. So there's plugins I'll use that I'm not happy about, but given the, eh, they're only doing this little thing over here, relatively lightweight, I can, I can live with this. Because if the traffic explodes, it's still doing that little thing in a little corner, it's fine. But if there's a plugin doing everything and I add load, this is not end up ending up in my foundation stack. Right? This does not make sense for me to build my business on. This is not sensical for me to say to somebody having a WooCommerce store, hey, you know what? This is nice and easy. It's great. Go ahead and use that because it'll solve all your problems. So if a client asks me, can I add this plugin? My answer will be yes, comma, but no. That is my default answer. And I'll just wait to see what they'll say. But I really need this functionality. I really want this. I really need that. Great, but let me see what the options are here and what are the consequences, right? If it, if it is introducing stuff that I don't want, it does not go into my foundation. And I'm... So I, ha I, I have clients who have, like, uh, extreme high maintenance, high volatility, high traffic sites. Uh, I can't just go and install whatever they like. And they ask me nonetheless. And they're making really good money with these sites, and they'll ask me the same questions as well. So this is, this is not me saying I'm better or that, but it's more of a thing of, I understand this layer. They're really good at their business. And you hire me to do that part, and this is my feedback. So work with that. Um, this is what I include, uh, hosting, your base theme, uh, fast plugins, optimization, where you do what, all of that. So, when it is time to build your actual site, how many of you who are building sites are using version control? Nice. Are we all using GitHub or Bitbucket or anything like that? Yeah, awesome. So, what the great thing about hosted version controllers, which is Git and then services like uh, GitHub and uh, Bitbucket, is that you have an opportunity to hook into whenever you're doing a deployment. It's called continuous uh, uh, delivery or innovation, or uh, there's, <laughs> there's different ways of explaining the same thing, but it's essentially about if I push code to the server, new plugin update or, or anything, I want to do an automated test of what the impact of that is. So this is something you need to have in there, because I've seen, I, I've been called in the meeting like, yeah, but he just introduced, or they just introduced a new plugin, and now it's, it's not working anymore. Well, was that done any testing? Yeah, yeah, we tested it before we deployed. But did you actually test the impact? Yeah. And then the, it becomes a different conversation. So testing is development. If you're not including that in your current way of producing a site, then this is the moment you start thinking, okay, what can I do to integrate any version of testing before I actually move on to the next. So this is what you need to test at bare minimum, uncached performance. So that means you're not testing the caching of your site. That makes zero sense. You want to test uncached. You test checkout after each little change that you introduce on your site. You will not be the first one to have a change move to production, and then 48 hours later, your client tells you, I'm not seeing any money coming in anymore. What's going on here? And you're going like, yeah, but 48 hours. That must be the client side, because my deployment was done 48 hours ago. Can't be that. This is why you test. So checkout needs to be tested, and especially che test checkout on mobile. Mobile, if you're not aware, uh, your phones are caching harder 
than your desktop machines are because caching not only happens inside your phone, it happens at the carrier level, it happens at proxies the carrier level uh, uses depending on who you're using. Uh, it, there's way more involved um, and combine that with generally lower speeds on your phones, you have something that is a high value thing to test because why high value? Do we know what the percentages of um, mobile versus desktop purchases are in general? Sorry? 70 30. Any others? 80? 80? Yeah. 80, yeah. So it, it, it roughly it depends a little bit on the, the market you're in, but there's, uh, there's known examples of almost 95%. Uh, and if your client is one of those, obviously you will know because you're doing hopefully some version of analytics that will tell you this. But if you don't know and you just deploy and you make everything slower and fields and complicate, it's not going to help. And for the record, this is why Shopify is winning on a lot of people converting them in, because they have that taken care of. You don't need to think about having an optimized cart, an optimized cart for mobile. Shopify takes care of you for that. So this is something we need to do extra when we're talking WooCommerce. And what is that extra? Start with testing. It's very simple. Um, so, again, testing is developing. Um, if you're testing, test all the pages, not just the product, but the checkout and the shop pages. You will not be the first person to only test the front page or maybe the shop page. No, you test them all because they all work together and you need to test the whole flow. Um, so, this is generally so far um, me saying you probably need a different mindset than what you were doing. And I'm not saying you didn't have the right mindset, um, but I am suggesting that maybe there's some few things you're not currently using in how you're developing your WooCommerce sites. Now, obviously, most of this also uh, works for WordPress in general, but WooCommerce is finicky. There's a lot more going on. It's a complex thing. You can't just treat it the same way you would treat WordPress because you have logged in people and you have commercial value with what those logged in people do. So who knows what the edge is beside the band member from U2? Besides, I, I, you know what? Somebody said browser. I, I don't, that's not even in my world. But you're, that's a good point. Uh, besides, besides the guitar player from U2 and that browser from those who we don't speak about, this, who knows what the edge means? So this is too many, uh, sorry, too few hands. This is three people I see. Do I see that correctly? One, two, three, yeah, four, four people, okay. So the edge is essentially a, a term that has been introduced at the time Cloudflare became really, really popular. The, they, I think they coined it or somewhere around there, but it essentially means anything you can do with your site before your actual server needs to do anything. The, the example we all know is a CDN, right? That is configured at DNS level, so traffic goes through your DNS level ser uh, server and it is then controlled where it's getting its assets. That's the one you all know. What well, Cloudflare, but there are other players. My favorite is Cloudflare, so I'm just going to stick with the word Cloudflare for now, but uh, do your due diligence in terms of looking what is working for you. But Cloudflare introduces a whole layer of stuff it's doing on the fly, meaning literally as your traffic is entering the stream to your server, it has a, an array of stuff it can do. One of the things I love that it's doing there is caching. One of the things I love that they're doing over there is a web application firewall security. One of the things that I love that they're doing over there is image optimization on the fly. Um, there's some folks from Human Made that built something in PHP. Is it still, do you still use it, Tachyon? Is it written in Node? Okay. So that's something that's happening on server level, but it's happening before it hits WordPress, correct? 
So Cloudflare offers this on the large scale for anybody willing to shell out $20 a month, or 25 it's, As of today, it's 25 Now, this is money. This is real money, and it costs you something. But the level of optimizations that it provides just by having you move that off the server in front of the site means you get a whole array of extra sweets and candy and stuff that is just absolutely delicious because it makes your server do more what it's supposed to do. It makes your WordPress and WooCommerce site do more of what it's good at. So offload where you can. Um, let the server handle your cron is a very simple one, but essentially WordPress uses a cron to activate certain things it needs to do, clean up, publish posts, all of that sort of stuff. This is typically handled by WordPress, but you're smarter uh, by uh, well, listening to me right now, I guess, a little bit, maybe. Um, there's a way to move the cron away from WordPress. You can turn it off in WP Config, and you can then set it up on your server. And your server is better at this, faster and efficient and more efficient than WordPress is. If you don't know how to do it, ask your hosting company, because they should know do it, how to do it. In fact, they should be telling you to do this. Um, this is on the database level, so an index adding to the meta value database column. If this doesn't mean anything to you, ask your hosting company to service you with this, but adding an index to your meta value database column will make your WooCommerce site faster. And I've seen cases where you go, damn, that's a lot faster. Okay. An index is nothing more than, this is my huge database, and I have this table here that I want to go quickly at, but I can because I have to scour through the whole thing. Your index is an indexation of this big thing. So the traffic to it will be faster if there's a middle index layer telling you here's where it's at. Redis. If you have heard the name Redis before, it's a smart thing to use, but you have to be sure to use it, when to use it. It is not something you turn on by default. You'll use it when it's actually providing a benefit. And when you're using it, you have to use it with Object Cache Pro, because that makes sense. Object Cache Pro with Redis is one of the smartest you can do for high database volume going back and forth from the browser to the database itself. Um, use responsive images. I don't think I need to explain this. It makes no sense to download a image of 3 MB when you're actually only using 100 KB. How am I on time, by the way? Good. We have time. Ten so, even more tips. Um, offload search. Um, Elastic, Algolia are the two names you should probably want to investigate in. If you have, so one of my clients has an 18-year-old database of 13 posts a day for 18 years long. You can imagine the size of that database. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense to actually use WordPress to search within that. I think the database is about 60 gigabytes. Um, doesn't make a lot of sense. You can use indexes and all that, and it'll be faster. Wonderful. But this is a good example of if you can offload that outside of WordPress and make it more efficient, do it. It'll make your site faster. Don't use large plugins for small tasks. So ACF, who knows ACF? That's a really popular plugin. <laughs> ACF recently introduced custom post type creation. When they did, I replied on Twitter, like, this makes zero sense to me, for the simple reason is there's, that's not something you want to have in your database. If I need to load the whole WordPress thing, and then your database, and then inside that database is something telling me to load a custom post type, I think we're in the wrong place doing the, the right thing. So custom post type declaration happens on PHP level in the file. You can use the, uh, ACF to generate it, but please use the output code and place it in your site plugin. It's just a smarter way of doing it. Ah, so many more tips. So WP Plugin Manager is an actual plugin that when turned on, it's one of the rare plugins where I say by adding another plugin, you're actually creating something better. Because what it'll allow you to do is you're loading only what you need to load on which page load 
of your site. So you'll get to be very specific. Like, who's not seen uh, contact form seven or gravity forms load their, all of their assets on the front page and you have no contact form there? Does that make sense? It's kind of stupid, yes. Um, I don't know about the second one, but see what you do with that. Um, block what you can. So if you're using a web application firewall, I highly re recommend Cloudflare. No, I don't have shares. Um, no, I'm not being paid to say this, but it comes from somebody who's been optimizing sites for eight, nine years quite intensively. Uh, it allows you to block traffic you don't need. Uh, Yoast DeFalk from Yoast wrote an article, I think about uh, six months ago, where he explained if in your robot's text you're not saying uh, and, and your site is not servicing Russian or, or, or uh, Mandarin, uh, 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 then it doesn't make a lot of sense for those search engines to index your site. So why don't you just block them? Any traffic that you don't need, keep it out. All the small things help. Final steps. And this is, this is the TLDR. You have to put in effort to keep your WooCommerce site fast. It is not something you set and forget. I see too many very smart developers thinking it's a set and forget because they paid attention at the beginning, they paid attention while building it and delivering it to the client, and then it's like, ooh, here you go. A client on, it, on their own will add plugins. We know this. Who's not ever seen that? <laughs> there you go. So make sure you're offering some type of retainer, not just to get money out of, but to help the client understand that your line of business is thinking for the client, helping them do the smarter thing. And that means there's a lot of automated testing that's not going to cost you a lot, but you can charge for you know, it's, it's okay to make money with it, but don't, uh, don't make that the main argument. The main argument is, I'll keep your site fast, I'll keep your site lean, I'll keep your site conscious of what it's doing, what its ecological footprint is, everything. Everything counts. Um, I think that goes... Um, automate testing, these are three things I highly recommend you look into. Uh, deployment Hawk, Userflow, and SpeedGuard. The last one is the WordPress plugin. If you really want to go low effort, you install this plugin and it'll tell you once you've done an update, whoa, we're seeing like a two minute increase of loading time per page. This is probably not the right plugin. It'll tell you. It uses an external pinging service that checks what's going on. Um, any of these three, depending on what your uh, proficiency is, is something to investigate into. Um, and that's it. That's, that's essentially what I have to say. Um, Thank yeah. Thank you. No questions? No questions whatsoever? Milan. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so um, in terms of uh, hosting, do you have any recommendations you usually make or a specific hoster you pick in general? This is, this is a... That you're not getting paid from? <laughs> no. uh, I'm currently not being paid by any hosting company, so we're good. <laughs> uh, I did work at a hosting company for two and a half years. Uh, and uh, it is not a very well-known hosting company, but it is one that I would recommend, but it comes with a budget. So that if you have high demanding clients, there is no other thing that I would recommend other than Servbolt. S-E-R-V-E-B-O-L-T, Servbolt. Having said that, there are more options out there, of course. Um, I think Kinsta in general is solid. Yeah. Um, I say in general because um, RocketNet is a good one, uh, Saravo is also okay, um, WP Engine in some cases works wonders, um, but it, it, it's a very loaded question because my answer truly is, it depends. Ramkus, thank you. 
educational as always. Thank uh, you. you opened up a lot of topics, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions, and thank you so much. But what is the one thing that you would never do on a WordPress or WordPress slash WooCommerce website? What is the one thing that you would say, like, oh, hell no? I, I, I uh, thank you. Um, I, I think the thing you want to avoid most is, um, I think, the combination of the security and, uh, and the caching. That I cannot stress that enough. Um, WP Rocket is a plugin that I really enjoy using. What do I turn off inside WP Rocket? The caching. Do I have a way to do that inside the UI? I don't. So I have a function that literally deactivates the caching. I'll take, have the server take care of the caching in a smart way. And then have WP Rocket do all the front-end optimization it's really good at. That's the way of using something smart. So uh, caching is doing that. And for security, I highly recommend you look into the web application firewall of, of Cloudflare because it, it offers so many extra stuff that you're just not aware of that's of its existence. Uh, it, it'd be a shame to not look into that any time you're running a site that makes money. Simple as that. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh, yeah. We are in this corner. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I think you need to come over here. Uh. And at what stage or from what load you would recommend to use Redis? Um, I, think, I don't think load is the right word. Uh, Redis is something that you need to understand what Redis does. Redis essentially has two functions. It allows you to queue stuff. And if you have jobs, if you, for instance, if there's stuff you build in Laravel and you need to have it interact with WordPress on a regular basis, it makes a lot of sense to use Redis because you'll then use the queuing system of Redis. So then load is, an, is a nonsensical thing to add. Um, if you have properly configured databases, MariaDB, highly optimized, the boundary for when load becomes a thing for Redis to be used is quite far away. So Servbolt, for instance, uh, has known cases where their database interactions are eight times faster than normal. And that's high. So that means whenever you need to introduce Redis, it's quite late. But the things to look for are, let's say you have a site that has a lot of comments and there's a lot of interaction. Let's say there's a site that is high traffic in terms of uh, bulk WooCommerce uh, uh, newsletter going out. Right? So 15, 20, 50,000 50, people jumping on that site, wanting to get that fastest deal using coupons is a great example. That's a high traffic thing going in and out of the database. That's more of the, the territory where I would look at, to, okay, now Redis makes sense. And when you're adding that, absolutely add WP Object Cache Pro. Those two go together. Do not install Redis without that one. That makes zero sense. Because WordPress will need to be optimized for that new interaction. And there are other plugins, but this is by far the best. I'm also not being paid to say that, but hey, Till, how are you doing? Uh, yeah. Um, if you need to optimize a website, like an e-commerce website, what is the thing that you, do you think is going to give more impact in the performance? And which... Which performance? The, uh, the, the actual fastness of the site? Yes. Yeah. And which other thing is... You think the most common people do it, but you think, no, don't waste time here because it doesn't give you. Uh, thank you. So one of the things I mentioned in the beginning was uh, if, you, if, you, if you think you need to remove data from your database to make your site faster, you're being lied to. So that's the one thing that I would say. If your host is telling you or strongly enforcing you to remove post revisions and clean up this and that on otherwise their site, your site won't perform as it should, that's a red flag for me. I will move my client away from that hosting company. And, and for the record, I have a list of yes and no types of hosting companies. Uh, the thing that will have the biggest impact, is it depends on two things. So in general, sites are either really well uh, optimized on the front end or really well on the back end. I rarely see the combination of the two at the same time. So it depends on what you need to do on the front end, and for that I would say WP Rocket helps you a great deal. It's a simple solution for a, a rather complex thing, what, it, what it's doing, but turn off caching. 
Uh, if it's on the back-end side of things, it's mostly poorly written uh, PHP. And by poorly, I mean if you have a file that is, I don't know, 2,000 lines, and everything, everything from line 10 to 2,000 is executing a function, and you didn't check before line 10 if it should be running at all, that's, those things I see the most in terms of, oh wow, this could save a lot because it's doing that on every single page load for every single person. Um, but that's not a, that's the best answer I can give. Sure, One think. last question. Yeah, so um, I play around with a VPS, which is a far too dangerous tool for me to play around with. Um, for me as well now. <laughs> And um, now I wonder, because you speak a lot about server-side optimization, yep. and I'm just trying to get the definitions right, because if you make changes to your HD access file in order to, to speed things up, is that on the side of WordPress, or is that on the server-side? That is server-side. HD That's access server-side. Server side. Yeah. Okay. I am of the opinion that you generally shouldn't be concerned with server optimization. I think that is the domain of your hosting provider. And I am also of the opinion that your hosting provider should be proactive towards you instead of you chasing, am I doing this right? Yeah. So their, their total environment should be fully optimized for whatever you're adding to it. And maybe they have an integrations plugin to activate a few things, fine, do that. But that's, that's, that's how I look at it. So I, um, I know my way around the command terminal. Mm -hmm. I use it a, a, a in a great many ways and deals and versions, but I don't want to do that anymore because it's not my domain. Yeah, I get that now. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's too much going on. Do I know how to install a web application firewall? Sure. Can I configure it? Fine. Do I want that responsibility? No. And it's as simple as that because the time that I don't have to spend there, I can spend on optimizing and fine tuning and trying to get the lighthouse metrics on mobile as close to 100 as possible. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just a matter of where do I put my energy. Thank you. Sure. Thank you very much. We're at the time for the picture now, so you can go outside to have you on a picture. Let's thank Renkus very much. Thank you.